This episode of Up to Speed is brought to you by Vikings War of Clans. Stay tuned at the end of the episode for a peek at the game and some sweet bonuses. For over 50 years, one car has been the world's benchmark, the standard to which every sports car is measured. It's the very embodiment of tradition, refusing to change layout or body line. And yet, no matter what year you're looking at, no matter how old, it's one of the best there is. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the first car I ever wanted, the Porsche 911. After Dub Dub 2, Ferdinand Porsche, who was largely responsible for the Beetle, switched his company from automotive consulting and racing to production. He and his son, Ferry, Dude, name this son Ferry. <laughs> he and his son Ferry rolled out the Porsche 356 in 1940. Sticking to the basic principles of his dad's Beetle design, Ferry and team made a circular body with a flat four air-cooled engine in the rear. The result is a lean, mean performance machine that brought the Porsche badge off the racetrack and onto public roads. Time goes by and the 356 sells fine. And the day comes when Ferry decides to upgrade to a new model. The new car, dubbed the 901, doesn't actually change all that much. It's just more. The flat four in the back becomes a flat six. And the steering wheel is designed to give the driver the best feedback possible from the tire. But it wasn't just sportier. The 901 was engineered to be more practical too. Look, a sports car with back seats. Is that even possible? The 901 was ready to take on the world. France had decided that they were done being invaded by Germany. Peugeot came along and said, ho ho ho, oi oi oi, you cannot use a zero in the middle of your car name. And Ferry said, was, why not? Because we are French and we have a copyright on all three digit car names with a zero in the middle. Wait, seriously? You actually copyrighted any three digit car name with a zero in the middle? We, oui, because we are French. Fur damas. <laughs> <laughs> So Porsche was like, fine, we'll call it the 911. The car debuts at the Frankfurt Motor Show in 1963 and hits dealerships a year later. The completed project makes 130 horsepower and blows its drivers away. It might be a little tail happy, but it's precision steering and fantastic acceleration more than makes up for it. At the same time, the whole family can fit inside thanks to the back seats. The 911 becomes a sensation, both in Germany and abroad. But don't worry, Peugeot, you've still got that zero in the middle. You do you. With a bona fide hit on their hands, Porsche realizes that they need to capitalize on their success by extending the brand. After releasing the 912, a four cylinder variant that never really caught on, Porsche decides that instead of making the engine smaller, yo, what if they made the roof come off? Who doesn't like going topless? Turns out, America. You put your clothes on this minute! <gasps> Mommy! Or so Porsche thought. Somebody in Stuttgart got word that the US would be passing stricter safety regulations around rollovers, which would make convertibles unsellable in the biggest car market in the world. The solution was to make an entirely new category of car, which Porsche called a Targa. A Targa has a glass roof and a solid upper roll bar for structural support. The roof can be folded away to get a convertible-ish experience and give the driver access to the open sky. Uh. One minor detail, the US never actually passed those regulations, which meant this new Targa car category isn't really necessary. Porsche keeps the Targa in production until 1989. I'm just saying, it was a pretty good idea. Yeah, we know, it's sort of like un-German of you to start bragging about stuff like this. I'm from California. Going topless is all well and good. Just ask Jessica at a music festival. But what the people really want is to go faster. And in 1966, Porsche responds to the people's pleas with the 911S. Basically the same great car with 30 more horsepower. The S was so successful that Porsche has gone on to make S variants of their other variants. <laughs> 
can't talk about the 9-11 without talking about racing. And boy, is there a lot to talk about. Pull up a chair. The first 9-11 in motorsport was in 1965, the Rally Monte Carlo. Turns out it would do pretty damn well. In its first time out, the 9-11 finished fifth overall. Nice job, Porsche. But the Monaco trip wouldn't be the last competition of the Porsche. They've won sports car championships, endurance championships, hill climb events, autocross, and of course, more rally. It's just that good. So, going into the 70s, Porsche knows exactly what it needs to do. Make more 911s with even more speed. For the 10 year anniversary, Porsche unveils the 911 Carrera RS. This marks the first time a 911 is called a Carrera, named after my ex-girlfriend, Carrera Panamericana. Carrera, Carrera Panamericana. She's beautiful. I really love the way you touch my butt. <laughs> Named after the Carrera Panamericana race and the first time the RS or racing sport title is used. It's the first 911 to come with a spoiler and with its 2.7 liter, 210 horsepower engine, it's the fastest 911 so far. In 1975, Porsche releases the 911 Turbo, internally called the 930. If you don't know Porsche, this might get confusing. All 911s have an internal code denoting which series of 911 they are. So the first 911 is a 911, and the 930 is a 911. The 930 is one of the very first road cars to use turbocharging technology. In fact, with that turbocharged rocket of an engine over the rear wheels, the 911 turbo can get up to 260 horsepower, making it the fastest car in the entire German auto industry. They call it the f***ing Widowmaker because it's fast as f and it kills dudes. This car is timeless. Mid-engine supercars, f that. Why have a V8 when you could have a flat six? In 1989, Porsche decides it's time at long last to give the 911 a full refresh. While still called the 911, the refresh was internally called the 964 and is sold and marketed as the Carrera. This is the best looking car in the history of the world. It has a rear wheel drive version just like all 911s before it, but for the first time, an all wheel drive version too. <sighs> but you know what they did to the engine? That's right! They kept it a flat six and kept it in the back. Cause this is a 911, damn it. And we aren't changing it. That blend of tradition and innovation works again. As the 911 continues right on into the 90s as one of the best selling and just plain best sports cars on earth. But unlike the original, the 964 isn't destined to stick around for 25 years. Sound familiar? Dad, Dave, Daddy, Dad Dope, David, Papa Pump, Dickhead. So in 1995, it was already farewell to the 964 and hello to the 993. With this incarnation, Porsche really has perfection. This is also when Porsche upgrades from a single turbo to a twin turbo. The engine was pushing out 400 horsepower. That's more than the Ferrari F355, which had a V8, flat six, Still, always, family. Family. In 1999, it's fare thee well to the 993 and with it, the air-cooled engine. The new 996 is The new 996 is water cool. Going into the 21st century, armed with the new engine, Porsche decides to really hammer home the 911's pedigree as a performance machine. So it was time for Stuttgart to start taking their racing spec cars and putting them onto the road. First up is the GT3. A stripped down, lightened, and amped up version of the 911 meant for a new racing class called, yeah, you guessed it, the GT3. What shall we call the GT3 car? The GT3? Ah, I love it. You do? Yes, I do. I love you. Was? Nothing. <laughs> the car hits the market with a smash. But for the truly insane, Porsche created an even more bonkers, even more hardcore version called the GT2. 
Guess what class of race that was named after? The GT2 class. Like the GT3, the GT2 is also a lighter, harder version of the 911, except the GT2 is even more, which makes it more crashy? <laughs> With these cars, Porsche is extending the 911 into supercar territory. That makes the 911 one of the most diverse sports cars on the market. And Porsche still isn't done yet. Stuttgart unveils the GT3 RS. Stripped of non-essentials like rear seats, sound insulation, and air conditioning, the GT3 RS is a for maniacs only rocket on the road and still Porsche wants Wants more. The GT2 RS followed not long after. A 620 horsepower monster that was even lighter than the stripped down GT3 RS. The 911 model range has gotten so broad, it's practically its own subsidiary within Porsche. Just want a usable daily car? The 911's got you. Want to set your tires on fire and blast the whole through time? There's a 911 for that too. All together, what does this mean? One million units sold. Stuttgart built its millionth 911 in 2017 and keeps it in their museum at their headquarters, which happens to be at my house. There aren't a whole lot of high and sports cars that sell anywhere near that many. And yet, according to Porsche, 70% of them are still on the road. A family car, a sports car, a supercar, and an absolute legend all under one name. The Porsche 911 is the most iconic sports car in the history of the world. This episode of Up to Speed was brought to you by Vikings War of Clans. It's a sweet RPG that you can play on your phone. And it reminds me of strategy games from when I was a wee boy in the early 2000s. They just did a major update and are now one of the top five mobile games in the friggin' world. Over 20 million million people are playing this game. That's over 10 times the amount of actual Vikings that ever lived, ever! Become a clan leader, annihilate your enemies, and use your economic skills to build a prosperous city. Just like I'm building LA. Install the game now using the link in the description below and get 200 gold and an initial protection shield allowing you to start taking over the world strong. This is everything you know to get up to speed on the Porsche 911, possibly the most iconic sports car. I know a lot of you are gonna be like, yo, what about Ferrari? Yo, what about Lamborghini? What's your favorite generation Porsche? Mine is either 993 or 964. What do you think of the front engine Porsches? I like them. Air cooled, water cooled, battle, go. Hit that subscribe button. More subscribers we get, the more shows we can make. Comment down below. We love to hear what you guys have to say. Share this with your friends. Follow me on Instagram, at James Pumphrey. If I get 55,000 followers, I'll pick 25 of you at random, and I'll send you something weird. Hi, Kobe. Hi, Spencer. I love you. <laughs>